Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in that holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and the tongues rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. Now, the crowd gathered and was because were not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how do we hear each of them, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Philgria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya that belong to Cyrene, and visitors from, both, from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judah and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. 
Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Church of Rome. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For did you not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear? But you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. (laughs) Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. We gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please. I wonder if this great feast day of Pentecost doesn't suffer from what we might call a bit of a branding problem. One bishop wrote, Sometimes a name becomes so attached to a particular object or product that we forget where it originally came from. That's just how our brains work. We like to form associations between different things. So, for example, if I'm about to sneeze, you may ask if I would like a Kleenex, knowing full well that it is most likely some other brand of tissue. If I suggest Google to you, does your mind first go to cell phones or a search engine? My guess is the latter. So what comes to mind when you think of Pentecost? Obviously, for many of you, it is wearing red. Um, Maybe the Holy Spirit. For our poor lectors, it's the long string of very difficult to pronounce place names. I swear, it's like the hardest reading of the year, and Drew did it very well. For me, it's recently been trying to imagine the looks on faces when Peter tells the crowd, there's no way they can be drunk because it's only 9 (laughs) a.m. For others of us, Pentecost has an association with a strand of Christian observance called Pentecostalism which is a a diverse and energetic sort of practice with speaking in tongues and faith healings. But that's not what we're talking about this morning. You may have heard Pentecost called the birthday of the church, and it is. That is definitely something it is. But Pentecost is also more. As Luke tells his story throughout his gospel and the sequel, We call that sequel the Acts of the Apostles. Pentecost is also the fulfillment of a promise that God had made in the distant past, something which had been foretold long ago by the prophets. 
And to hear that story, we must start with a totally different Pentecost. You see, there were three great pilgrimage festivals in ancient Judaism, although I'm actually only going to talk about two of them this morning. They were called for in the Old Testament, and all able-bodied people who could do so were expected to make their way to the Jerusalem temple for each of these three every year. The first, and most likely the most familiar of them for us, was the Passover, which recalled God's salvation of God's people during captivity in Egypt and was celebrated with unleavened bread and the sacrifice of a lamb. Precisely seven weeks later comes the next one, the Feast of Weeks. Now this was both a celebration of the wheat harvest and also a renewal ceremony for the covenant that God had made with Israel. From those beginnings, it actually grew to become a commemoration of God giving the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. And eventually, Greek-speaking Jews called it Pentecost, which just means 50 days. If you're doing the math, you have to count inclusively to make seven weeks equal 50 days, but it works. And that's exactly how long after Passover the Feast of Weeks was. You should be hearing some resonances for our worship practices at this point. Our Pentecost is a different 50 days. It had been seven weeks since the first Easter morning. 50 days since the empty tomb. A week of weeks since the true Paschal Lamb broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave as we sing each year at the Great Vigil. Luke tells us that the resurrected Jesus spent the first 40 of those 50 days with his disciples, teaching about the kingdom of God. And then the time came for his ascension into heaven but not before he promised them that they would soon be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And I can't imagine any of them had a clue what that meant. In a way that Luke can only describe metaphorically, there was a loud noise, and the gathered disciples were all inspired to speak God's praises. And so a crowd gathers around, a crowd full of immigrants, and visitors who would have been in town for the Feast of Weeks. Diaspora Jews from all over the place. But yet each of them understood what was being said. Another thing Jesus told his disciples right before his ascension was that they would be his witnesses to the end of the earth. And now with this miraculous outpouring that mission had begun. The good news of God's salvation was now being proclaimed to all people. And that prompted Peter to stand up and give what has been called the first Christian sermon to try and explain what in the world was happening. And he does so by drawing from a prophecy in the book of Joel. When the Spirit comes upon all people in the last days, so now, instead of just a few select people being inspired by the Holy Spirit for special things, it would be all people, all genders, all ages, all social classes. God's salvation was extended to all who seek it. Everything which had been promised was now available, is now available. And so, yes, we wear red today. We celebrate the birthday of the church, but do not make the mistake of thinking that Pentecost was the end of the church's story, because it was not. It was just a beginning. There is still much work to be done in both word and deed. And so for us, Pentecost functions as sort of a hinge 
between the season of Easter and this next long liturgical season which follows. Because Jesus has been raised from the grave and raised into heaven, ushering in the last days, where the church functions as a continuation of his presence. That's what it means to be his body on earth while we wait for his return. But thank God we were not left to do this on our own. We have been adopted by God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to follow in Christ's footsteps as we proclaim the good news of all who will listen, to all who will listen, and equally important, to enact it in the here and the now. And we've been given the power to do it. Let me make that more personal. You've been given the power to do it. And so have you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. So what's stopping you? I invite you to stand and join with me in the words of the Nicene Creed. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Our God is with us and in us Therefore, let us pray. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy God, by your Spirit you gave birth to your church. May our many members be with the one body of Christ in this world, and then lead us by your Holy Spirit in the ways of truth and love. Come, Spirit of Truth. Lord God, you gave your disciples the ability to speak in the languages of the people. May we also speak about your deeds of power throughout the world, that all may be known of your salvation. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord God, the earth is full of your creatures. May all who look to you be given food in due season. 
Open your hands in desolate places and fill the hungry with good things. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord God, you poured out your Holy Spirit in your holy city, Jerusalem. Pour out your Spirit in your own city. Raise up prophets and dreamers. Give us vision. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord God, you give the gift of healing by your Spirit, bringing healing and wholeness to all those in our hearts and minds this day. In your might and mercy, renew the face of the earth. Bring renewal to those in need. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord God, you adopt us as your children, joint heirs with your Christ in your mercy. Keep us and love us. May we and all who have entered into your joy rest in your presence forever. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Holy Spirit. We especially pray for Carrie, Tom, John, Howard, Susan, Heather, Mike, Renee, Jeff, Kurt, Christina, John, Andrew, Claire, Steve, Jim, Sue. And for all people affected by violence, especially for the people of Ukraine and all those who have been displaced. And we pray for those now we name either silently or aloud. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the congregations in the Oak Park Deanery, which includes us here at Emmanuel, and for our companion diocese of Southeast Mexico and rank South Sudan. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Southern Africa. God of mercy, you have redeemed us and bestowed the Spirit upon us giving us a new birth. As we celebrate Christ's resurrection, increase our awareness of these blessings and renew your gift of life within us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need thy mercy. Lord, hear us when we pray. 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 Lord, Walk in your ways. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God be always with you. whenever you're ready. Um, good morning and welcome to Worship at Emmanuel. Happy Pentecost. And to those of you who are worshiping online, welcome as well. Those of you who are uh, wearing red, you get extra brownie points in the church's eyes, which are um, redeemable for nothing, but feel good. Right? Um, we have a couple of quick announcements. Uh, number one is there are some folks working on our roof. 
So if you hear hearing bangs and clangs, it is not the roof falling in. It is not the Holy Spirit on the roof. The Holy Spirit is in this place. Um, and it's also not a massive thunderstorm, which is actually what I thought it was during the 8 o'clock service and lamented that I didn't bring an umbrella. Um, we pray for the safety of those who are working up there and for the longevity of their repair job. Longevity and effectiveness of their repair job, I should Absolutely. say. Absolutely. If you look on the front cover of your Sunday Times, you will see the big announcements staring at you in bold. Hopefully this is a reminder and no one's surprised by this. Starting next week, we're going to combine the 8 and the 10 o'clock into one service at 9.15 with limited music, but we will still be singing some hymns. So it's our hope that the two services can mingle a bit and we'll also be doing some other special things over the summer to take advantage of that schedule. Uh, it will be live streamed, so remember, those of you at home, 9.15 starting next week, and that will last until Labor Day, plus or minus a week, most likely. Um, also next week is our newcomer's brunch after the 9.15 service. So uh, if we've got a lot of new faces around here, which is super exciting, and we want to spend some time getting to know you better and telling you about our beloved church. So if you're new here in the last couple of years, please come join us. I think the food plan right now is bagels, donuts, coffee, and orange juice. So uh, I think that counts as a brunch. Sometimes I have to pause for the jokes to get out of my system. Um, formation is also on break for the summer, um, but we are soliciting your ideas um, in the most low-tech and hopefully crowdsourcey type of way possible. If you walk this way, um, towards the breezeway, towards the parish office, there's a big piece of, piece of butcher paper that's duct taped to the wall. Can't beat that for creativity. Um, we're writing out ideas of things we might be interested in studying, looking into, learning about um, next year, starting in the fall. I would love for you to add your ideas and to amplify. If you see an idea on there that um, sounds great to you, draw a circle, make a check mark, write agree or yes next to it, indicate. Um, your uh, interest in it as well. I just realized I don't think I put out any markers next to it, so. We will do that. We will put out some markers next to it if you don't have a pen in your pocket. Um, but please um, help us uh, uh, create the most diverse and meaningful curriculum we can for adult formation in the fall. Something else you can help us with today after the service is weeding, everyone's favorite early summer activity. Uh, Kim, where should people meet? Okay, so right out here around the steps or so. Um, if you need to go home and get changed and come back, that's cool too. Um, but hopefully a lot of you got the message and came in comfortable gardening clothes. And then it's every Wednesday evening for the summer at, remind me the time, five o'clock. So if you're able to just pitch in a little bit on Wednesday evenings, we would love to have your help keeping this place looking gorgeous. Um, this is the first Sunday of the month, so that means it is Seek and Find Sunday. Seeing if they're paying attention over there. <laughs> no. So, uh, for the kids, if you can find this thing, and I'll give you a hint, you guys are kind of all facing the right direction right now. They're facing the wrong way. Mm. Little hint. It's a pretty easy one, I think. Uh, I do have the holy candy bucket and it stands ready to dispense candy. Um, perhaps finally, Dave might say something else, but finally from me, um, my hope is that you received an email from Reverend Dave and myself on Friday concerning an article that was in the Sun-Times, at least the online edition on Friday. Um, we just want to reiterate that we are open and willing to speak to anybody about any feelings, thoughts, memories that article brought up. Um, it, for those of you who didn't see the email, it con uh, concerned an old uh, but recently settled case of clergy sexual abuse. The abuse did not happen at Emanuel, but Emanuel was mentioned in the article. And we know that whenever these things come back up in the news, it can bring up memories or feelings or, um, you know, uh, questions. Um, neither Dave or I were here when that happened. We don't have any details to share. Truly, what we put in that email is about what we know. Um, but we are well willing and uh, very very much willing and very much welcoming any conversation you wish to have on that. This is also a good reminder that if you did not receive that email, uh, we may not have your email address in the parish office. We hope that you will send it in um, to Judy, our administrator, or that those emails may be going to your spam folder. So please um, take a look and make sure you're getting our emails in your inbox so you can stay on top of all the news and happenings here at Emmanuel.
Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and fragrant sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings throughout eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come. We offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. To you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
These are the gifts of God for you who are the people of God. Come, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on Christ in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
I invite you to stand or kneel for our prayer after communion. And together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may God give you grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you today and forever. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. <laughs>